hello, this is Ed uh, for the Monday podcast for Line Break Rugby. And with me I have Deck or Harvel. Say hello, Deck or Harvel. How are you? Long time no speak. It's been ages. I'm not even sure you've uh, taken part in one of these newer Monday podcast episode things. No, this is my um, first one. And we also have Adam or CC, um, who will say hello. Hello. There we go. Okay, so uh, discussions today are mostly uh, the European rugby that has gone on this past weekend. Um, first things first, though, I suppose it'd be uh, remiss of us not to mention it. Um, on, I believe it was Saturday morning, uh, Munster were due to be playing uh, Racing 92, <coughs> uh, but unfortunately, uh, I believe most of the rugby world knows now that Anthony Foley. Munster's head coach uh, passed away. Um, causes I don't think are yet known, uh, but it's shocked uh, certainly all of Ireland uh, and much of European rugby as a whole, um, as he was rather an integral part to uh, both Ireland uh, as a team and certainly to Munster both as a player and as a coach. Um, he's been with them for 21 years, uh, Munster, and so. This is much with uh, what happened with Jerry Collins and Jonah Lomu quite recently. Um, the outpouring has, of support has been rather large and uh, all, I believe, certainly worth it of a, a legend of the game. <clears throat> we do have an Irishman with us. Um, he might be from Leinster, uh, not Munster, but uh, I think well. we do have some knowledge of a I mean you know you put it this way um, when something like this happens uh, all the province rivalries of course disappear and wash away um, it's always somber moments like this um, where you focus on the individual now I mean while he was a talisman in the green I believe he had over 60 caps for Ireland uh, one of the memories for me was back in uh, 2004 against France scoring but uh, you know he was he was mostly remembered for his service really to Munster and, and, and the, the red jersey so while I might not be the most qualified person I mean you know you, you can see and you can recognize that this man he lived breathed Munster he was the embodiment of the team um, I believe he started playing in the, the mid-90s and saw them through to uh, 2000, the final against Northampton, unfortunately lost at the time when Leinster, I suppose, was playing around in the Celtic Cup. Um, they already had their sights focused on, on bigger things and, and the glory. And then 2006 was when they won in Cardiff against uh, Biarritz. And Anthony Foley lifted the trophy as captain. Um, it's it's devastating to see such a man uh, just just die so early. Um, and from I suppose an outsider's perspective, it is uh, even even more difficult because I know he we all know he's had a difficult two years now as as Munster coach it's not an easy job yeah, big shoes to fill um he's always been present in the club he's always had that uh a sense of authority from player to captain and ultimately from assistant coach to coach uh nobody ever said it was going to be an easy job he did come under a lot of criticism but uh he could see he was not afraid to look for help and to improve over that time as well. So it's sad to see that he won't get the chance to, to really bring the team to further glory. And, um, you know, I suppose on, on, on more of the personal side as well, his his father, was, I mean, he's from a, a rugby family uh, through and through with a bit of GAA in there as well. His, his father uh, was in the famous Munster team to play against the All Blacks that we, we are all aware of and that we... Um, all look back on with rose tinted glasses as well and you know he, he leaves behind then two two sons as well which you know hopefully they're um they'll follow in their father's steps as well hopefully 
but um, looking at the outpouring or the outcry of uh, support, uh, the, the fans in Paris leaving their jerseys, their flags, singing the fields of Athen Rye, um, seeing the photo of Anthony Foley and the notice of death at Exeter versus Claremont, two teams not from Ireland. Uh, it's it's you know quite touching, and I've seen fans of other provinces in Ireland call for uh, the Fields of Athen Rye to be sung at their own matches, their next home matches. I mean that would be something that you know I'd love to participate in if uh, if others will be looking to as well. And uh, I suppose I'll just close with Munster's famous song "Stand Up and Fight," how it ends until you hear that bell. That final bell, stand up and fight like hell. That is Anthony Foley. going to be a sore spot for a while yeah. for many a fan. Munster missed their game against Rassing and I think it's uh, to their discretion they may or may not miss uh, the next game they play. And I suppose just on that the next match is Glasgow. I think it's Glasgow at home. Um, a lot of fans actually have been saying that uh, a lot of Munster fans have been commenting they're not in the sub but in social media and that they would love to have that match go ahead. You know, for uh, it is a home match. It is something that the fans would rally around. That you know, it wouldn't be easy for the players, of yeah. course. I mean, that that's a sense of disarray, really. But um, yeah, it's it's it, you know, it, it may still go ahead as something just to unite the team and the fans. But we'll see. Yeah, certainly. Uh, assuming it does, I'm sure it'll be a fitting way to uh, to remember him. Um, so I suppose, yeah, as sombre as that is and as uh, this weekend has been in that regard, uh, I suppose we should perhaps move on to uh, other things for the time being. Um, the last thing, uh, I will mention just one final thing. I believe Sky Sports 5 uh, has been <laughs> replaying the uh, the 2006 Heineken Cup final. And I'm sure the full match will be making the rounds. And so I suppose even if you have just a passing interest, it might be worth looking into that or trying to find a replay at some point. Um, yeah. Okay. So on to other things, Pro 12. But, uh, I suppose, yeah, it's... Uh, move on to different things, move on to other things. It's... Uh, European rugby. Then? Yep. Um, Which, despite being overshadowed, there have been a fair few matches gone on this weekend. That was it, and a lot of Pro 12 success. Most importantly. Yeah, I, I keep seeing lots of um, Pro 12 master race comments and feeling slightly. Uh, well, I don't know. I suppose Adam can give the best view of that. Um, well, I suppose you can give a decent view as well. Um, oh well, yeah, it was. Um, I mean, on Friday or Thursday, sorry, you started with Thursday and Friday was the uh, Challenge Cup. Um, yeah. I think maybe it was people... Harlequins beat Stade Francais. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That. Uh huh. That did happen. Um. There were, and then uh, obviously on the Friday, then you had the uh, the three Jesus. Welsh teams. Yeah. Play on the uh, in the Challenge Cup. Uh, I don't uh, think. I've... 
anyone expected them to well, maybe not to do as well as they did, but three bonus point wins yeah. in one night was pretty good. Um, quite impressed. Literally just seeing their score against Newcastle. Yeah, it was quite impressive. It was pretty Ospreys. hefty. If you were forty-five nil, if you haven't seen Justin Tipperick's try from that game, I suggest you do. So I I, I missed the the Challenge Cup. I have to be honest, but did I just hear forty-five nil against Newcastle, a Premiership team? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's I don't want to take anything away from Newcastle. But that's a fantastic win. I did see Tipperick's try, um, and it is like watching an outside back. Um, funniest, well, not funniest, maybe funniest. I'll go with funniest. Um, the person who I suppose keeps pace the best with him, the one that stays closest to him but still fails to make the final tackle, uh, was Newcastle's hooker. Um, yeah, I noticed Tiffering that. Playing yeah. like a centre, and it, I think it's... Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened there, but it was uh, a fantastic try. Um, and then you had the uh, Dragons playing Brief. I believe they were... Uh, Brief might have even been, been ahead or it might have been a draw, I can't quite remember, about 60 minutes in. And then the last twenty minutes or so, Dragon scored four tries. Um, and, yeah, as you do, and, and really sort of took that one <laughs> that's, away. Um, that's staggering. Yeah, and then a similar sort of story. Oh with no, the, you're not. With, you're not joking. Yeah. Wow. Sick. It was at uh, fifty-nine minutes. Uh, Breve went in. He- uh, oh no. Let's. Yeah. At fifty-nine minutes, Breve kicked a penalty to make it sixteen thirteen to them. And then for the next 21 minutes, it was just utter dominance from Newport Grand Dragons. Yeah, which is I I, I think spectacular. They they do tend to perform better in the Challenge Cup than they do in the league anyway. Um, good because I don't want to see so another to see Dragons them. double over Leinster. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then yeah, the Blues I think had a, had a bit of a similar story. Started off a bit uh, equal with uh, Bristol in terms of. Uh, score and then came away in the last sort of portion of the game to to win it with a bonus point um Cuthbert's back scoring tries again which is nice um as is Tom James so that'll be pretty interesting in terms of Wales I'm only going to mention it briefly but in terms of Wales considering George North might not be available for the Australia game so it opens up a, a spot on the wing there um but yeah overall that Friday was pretty good and then uh, I think Saturday in the Challenge Cup produced a bit of a good result as well with NSA, the Siberian team beating Worcester. Um, nineteen twelve. They're from? Yeah, they're they're yeah. Russian. Yeah, that's got to hurt. Jesus. Was it by? I think it was one or two yeah, points. No. So wait, which they play? Do they play in the Pro Twelve as well, or are they? No, 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 no. They're no. That that's that, uh, where they play in where the. Where they uh, usually play? They play in the Russian Premiership, which is the. Uh, actual, oh, wow, and they're in. It's a professional league in Russia. So I think um, there are two teams that are um, outside of, say, the traditional leagues that yeah. play in the uh, Challenge Cup. NSA STM and the uh, Timisora yeah. Saracens. Yeah, exactly. Is that Timisora? Timisora, I think. Timisora? I think it's Timisora. But okay. we'll, we'll have a Romanian again, correct then. us, hopefully. And they can join us on the podcast then as well for more diversity. <laughs> they they didn't do quite as well though they uh, they got stomped by Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, um, but that for that victory for NSA is is a good one. Um, they got a few last yeah. year as well. I think they beat Newcastle last year, um, which I think is uh, so. Yeah, they, they've had a good few results in the Challenge Cup. Um, I don't think they'll make the quarters, but you know it's good to have a bit of. Uh, Tier two club representation going on. Well, that's it exactly. You want to see more uh, teams in, or maybe more countries, more teams from different areas, different locations, contributing to rugby playing with um, higher levels as well to increase their own skills and get a win out of it. I mean, especially against a team such as Worcester, it's uh, it's no small feat. Yeah. Um, so then otherwise uh, Pro 12's I, I don't want to say dominance but they did do rather well as well uh, dominance where am I trying to look at dominance well maybe <laughs> not I mean it's I saw I mean I know Glasgow were playing at home but I saw a lot of people thinking that you know Leicester might have that one in the bag um, and that didn't go to plan Glasgow 
played exceptionally well. I think I did watch most of that match actually. I uh, there was yeah I did. There was a terrible tackle. In fact, that's probably worth discussing. There was a tackle that got uh, I want to say Tamua. Do I want to say Tamua? I do want to say Tamua. Yeah, yeah, it's Matt Tamua. Matt um, Tamua got a yellow card for a effectively a spear tackle, and it was a. I'm still not sure whether or not I think it should have been a red, but I think. Certainly, with the uh, the efforts that have been made, this is a bit of a tangent now. The efforts that have been made to kind of take player safety into account, I feel there's also a bit of a common not well maybe common sense has been ignored just a little bit because I think it was taken it was a yellow just because uh, the player that he tackled I want to say Finn Russell um, put his arm out to stop him landing on his head and if he hadn't had the wherewithal to do that. If his, if his arm had been, you know, trap or caught or somewhere else, um, he would have landed square on the top of his head. Uh, and I think it probably should have been a red card. And granted, at 12 minutes, you don't want to, you know, do something that affects the game so starkly as a red card, leaving a team down to 14 for 68 minutes. But I think in those kind of circumstances, I'm not entirely sure... Uh, a red wasn't, in fact. Well, wasn't. look, I mean, um, you know, this happens all over the place. And, you know, we can go into very specific, uh, you know, matches, teams. Uh, just one that comes to mind, um, you know, the referees seem to just take a lot into consideration. I understand it's an extremely, extremely dis uh, difficult decision to make. Um, it's one that's going to affect the rest of the match. And I do remember uh, Wasps v Leinster, uh under Matt O'Connor um, was it Dave Carney was taken out of it uh, by Simpson I believe within the first Samson sorry in the first um, 30 seconds and it was Ashley Johnson wasn't it was it I can't remember uh, 100% but I just remember it was the first 30-35 seconds and we lost Dave Carney for an entire yeah. 79 minutes uh, uh, so you know it, 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 I understand why he didn't give a red card. You know, he was concerned about the uh, the impact on the match. Fifteen versus fourteen for a full seventy-five minutes. But when you you're down a player, yeah. then and a su potential sub as well for the same amount of time. There is a on the on the flip side of that. You might want to pull uh, if you know any Ulster fans. Yes. <laughs> ask them what their opinion is of a of a uh, that with because there was two seasons ago, wasn't it? Jared Payne underneath Alex Good. Uh, and pain was off, I think, after just two minutes. So, these things... Um, but I suppose one of the reasons, I mean, Ulster is, is the team that just seems to attract Reds at, at all the wrong times. But uh, one of the things um, that I suppose just... I'll, I'll throw this, um, you know, cat amongst the pigeons here and see how it, it, it goes down. But um, the GAA in Ireland introduced something called a black card... Um, a couple of years back that forces a team to make a substitution permanently um so could you oh i like so that. could you imagine in the case of um leinster or sorry wasps via leinster um you know we lose a player he's substituted yeah. permanently for 75 minutes uh, would that also be a fitting uh punishment for wasps uh for for whatever team does that in an early point where it's maybe it's um severe but the referee is not really considering a red or he doesn't know what to do and he's worried about the impact of 15 versus 14 for almost 80 minutes that could be a solution as well you know so i quite like that yeah idea. um i mean the black card i i have to be honest uh has its controversies in in GAA, but you know it's 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 something that I've never heard of in any other sport. It may or may not exist. I don't know, but um, it's being really trialed here in Ireland anyway. And uh, you know, it, it's an alternative. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, back slightly on topic then. Um, just a bit more going back to the whole Pro Twelve. Uh, dominance, as we were. I think, were Ulster the only Pro 12 team to... Uh... Oh, that's right. Or, um... Well, no, 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 I take, no, I take that back Zebra. because the Italian teams are... Yeah, so we're going to... Well, <laughs> Zebra did get... I mean, I, I think Wasps actually broke a record um, when they beat Zebra. Um, they also... 82 points to 14. 
conceded two tries, scored 12, um, which is... The highlights are incredibly fun to watch, I'll say that much. But it is still, you know, they are the blip. Um, but there was still Glasgow destroyed Leicester. Um, Connaught, plucky little Connaught who made the final last year. Who uh, won the final lose. last year and beat Leinster. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah it's, I, I did mean to say that. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, it's, um, Ulster. Too bad. So, so sadly, I mean, I've I've I haven't been able to watch a lot of rugby uh, in the last, uh, I suppose, eight months that I've been MIA. But um, you know, as well, this weekend I really only caught Leinster, the second half of uh, Glasgow Leicester, and the kind of second half of Connacht v Toulouse. And I have to be honest, Connacht and Toulouse, oh, it's fantastic again. Um, breaking their record of what was it, seventy-eight or odd. Um, that number may or may not be correct. Um, home victories in Toulouse, that being broken by Connacht. And then to come back, I believe it was an 11-point deficit at the time, uh, to come back and beat Toulouse and score. One amazing try. I, I miss it, but I saw it in the highlights um, in the first half. So, uh, yeah, Connacht, bad start to the Pro 12, but uh, it's not all decided yet. Uh, yeah, Toulon suffered a similar uh, setback. Yeah. I think they have. This is against Saracens. This was their first Heineken European match they've lost at home, and that's that's got to be a record going back four years, five years. Well, no, I think I mean even Heineken Cup matches as well, um, not just European Champions Cup yeah. matches. So that's going back probably to as far back as because didn't they get promoted from from uh, the um, Challenge Cup where they lost the Pro D two? Oh, sorry, yeah, but they also oh. played in the Challenge Cup where they lost to yeah. Cardiff Blues. All right. No, am I right there, Adam? Uh, we... I think he's napping. <laughs> he's uh, playing Star Trek. I, I, yeah. Um... <laughs> We can edit that, can't you? Can you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we can. What was the question? Um, <laughs> we're, we were talking about Toulon, uh, Toulon's dominance, and uh, how Cardiff were once plucky enough to be. Oh yeah. right, yeah. No, yeah, in, no, uh... no. Toulon, how Cardiff beat Toulon, not Connacht. Yeah. Yeah, Cardiff beat them in I the said, oh, Challenge Cup final in 2010, and then again in the. Oh, right. in, a, in the Heineken Cup pool uh, pool game in 2013. Really, you beat them twice. Yeah. Oh, but were they? Where were those matches though? That's the important thing because the were they Challenge Cup final were was in, I in France. I think it was in Marseille, um, and the oh. pool game was in Cardiff. Yeah, because I think that's the thing. It's Toulon's record was home games going back, God knows how many years, but. Uh, Scarlets beat Sale by a quite a handy number. Uh, I feel like I'm not uh, moderating this brilliantly. No, you're fine. You're fine. Come on, you've not said something for a while. You've uh, come on, bring us, uh, tell us about the Welsh teams. Tell us about why they've done so well. And because I was under the impression that Scarlets were all right, and then I was somewhat convinced during the match that actually they were a bit shit, uh, and then they absolutely turned it on um, and kind of reinvigorated my hatred for Welsh scrum halves. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, they they had a, a really slow start to the season. Um, so they lost their first three games and then won their last three in the Pro 12. So they've been average but getting better. Um, I think people were mainly sort of a bit underwhelmed because there'd been so much hype about their back line over the past sort of few weeks, months before the start of the season. And then they just sort of forgot to do anything with their forwards um, and that sort of meant that their backs couldn't really do anything. So they've started to improve that a bit more. I think Samson Lee coming back has helped. Jake Ball coming back has helped. Um, so I think that's what one of the main things against Sale that helped is that the backs could actually have time to do things. Yeah. Um, James Davis has been brilliant. I I was extremely impressed with a, uh, I believe it's silver medalist James Davis. Isn't yes, it? it is. Yeah, Olympian, Very cubby boy. Very impressed with him. I reckon. He could do with a cap or two for Wales. Um, 
Uh, well, yeah, there's, there's definitely um, going to be room in the back row uh, if you know Warburton's injury doesn't get any better. He's meant to be back this week, but you know we don't know. Uh, Falatau's out. Um, Moriarty might miss the first game, so you know the, the, there's room in the back row at the moment. Uh, and uh, luckily, I think we have the depth to fill it. Okay. Um, what else to reflect on? I feel like you guys so pro twelve. I'm not the biggest follower of. Um, I have uh, my my allegiances lie elsewhere um, with a team Across that are only seas. just starting to pick up in form. Well, not re well neighbouring. Well, well ish. for me, <laughs> neighbour to neighbour. <laughs> yeah, but neighbour to two of them for uh, us. Well, I was I, I just wanted to put to you, I suppose, um, because I feel like I've already done too much talking. Well, the, I um, just pro twelve in general of where it is so far uh, in the season, what it means. Certainly, I mean, I know we're still about three weeks away from the autumn internationals. Uh, I think it's um, been pretty interesting. But any players who have stood up, and um, I think generally the sort of quality of the pro twelve has has jumped up a bit this season. Um, Definitely over the past season, and I know I know like attendances are up, viewing numbers on the TV are way up for the Pro 12 this year. Um, I don't know what it is, but something's happened. Uh, even gone down to it's not really relevant, but the Welsh Premiership levels, attendances are up there, the quality's up there. There's something happening at the moment. I don't, I'm not quite sure what it is, um, but definitely the Pro 12 has been a lot more fun to watch. Uh, so far this season, yeah. um, with the teams playing a lot better, and it's shown in Europe. I mean, the whole thing. Last season was the Pro 12 maybe improving last year, but no Pro 12 teams actually got out of the, uh, or made it to the semi-finals or I think even the quarterfinals. Yeah, semi-finals. Semi-finals. No, semi-finals. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that that was really uh, showing. I think that even even though it was improving, there wasn't really a comparison. Um, well, you'd yeah. say maybe with this this first round of Europe that they are starting to get back up to this this level now. Definitely. I mean, it is more competitive. You know, people kind of, from, especially from other countries, um, say France or England, you're used to more um, professional private clubs um, or the Southern Hemisphere where you have um, beautiful, sexy, try-scoring rugby. But, you know, the Pro 12 is quite competitive and there are so many teams that are ranked around the same level. Uh, so many difficult uh, places to go and play in. <coughs> Galway. Um but you know we can see that uh, I believe uh, Ulster went the longest uh, without losing. Um, the Welsh teams are competitive. I mean Cardiff went a while as well without losing a match. I believe Leinster ended that. Um, the Ospreys, you can see they're they're gunning for it as well as the Glasgow Warriors. Uh, Connacht had a difficult start, but you know they're easing back into it. You can see they're they're starting to switch back on. I believe they had a couple of injuries as well. So there's definitely, um, you know, this this could be another interesting season as well. Um, maybe not as interesting as seeing uh, a, a team that's normally in the, the bottom half, such as Connacht, go on and win it. But uh, I can see it definitely being competitive. I didn't know that the viewing numbers and attendance was up in Wales, which I'll be honest is uh, fantastic to hear because that's something that. You know, the, the Pro 12 always had kind of difficulty in filling out seats, no? Uh, yeah, um, and it was something that's shown, uh, I mean, I only really have uh, Cardiff to go on to sort of for personal experience. Um, but, I mean, you look at the first game against Edinburgh, that was, had an attendance of 4,500, I think. And then yeah. you had, you know, they put on a good performance there, went away to Munster, beat Munster. Um and then came back the next week to play against Glasgow and had double the attendance, um, which is unheard of for Cardiff these past couple of seasons. Um, <laughs> well, success, I suppose, is what sells, you know? Yeah. And Cardiff definitely had a good start, which is the opposite to to, uh, to Connacht, for example, who had a very bad start. Uh, Cardiff is a team that's, that's stacked with good players as well. And, you know, you... <laughs> like. At at some point, there has to be success for Cardiff. Um, you know, you have the players, you have the grounds, you have the facilities, um, you have the city, um, also known as the mecca of rugby. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's all a good recipe, and you know, it's it, the year that clicks is the year that uh, 
you know, I'll be afraid. But yeah, it, it has to come good sometime. Mm. I mean, there's this plan at the moment to to make Cardiff into a what they call a European city, I suppose, um, in terms of something like um, London, obviously famous for you know big European teams like Harlequins, London uh, Wasps when they were London Wasps and Saracens. You you know in France you've got Toulon and yeah. stuff like that. Um, and the idea to have a a Welsh sort of European team is in terms of Cardiff is a plan. You know they're they're going to build this new stadium. Um, they're going to knock down one to back. So where would where knock down the Arms Park? What knock down the Cardiff Arms yeah. Park? Oh, but that's like sacred ground to the Welsh, isn't it? I I think the, the main one was the old National Stadium, and that was knocked down to build the Millennium, and now people prefer that one. So I don't think many people have too much of a problem by knocking down the little Arms Park. Uh, I I don't recognise that name. Do you uh? Uh, are you talking about the uh, the Principality Stadium? There? Sorry, no, oh. I, I, I don't I don't recognise. Low blow. <laughs> um, I suppose it's just like knocking down the Vatican to to build a newer, better one. Yeah, <coughs> uh, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think maybe it, it, it's not a, exactly a great stadium anyway. Um, uh, you know, I think it, it, the the plans for this new one are insane. Anyway, I think they're talking about having like a retractable roof and things like that, and having it for concert spaces and. Yeah, it's going to be crazy, whatever they're going to do. But well, they're making you know big signings as well. Um, bringing over Willis Hallaholo, he's going to be over us soon. Um, I think he's, his Mitre 10 campaign was, has uh... just ended, so he's able to come over ASAP. Um, and which, uh, is he, was he Crusaders? He was or... Canes. Uh, uh, yeah. Hurricanes, okay. Um so yeah, and he he had and is he quite yeah, good? He, then? he had a really good season for them. Um, I think he the reason for him signing for Cardiff was that he wasn't sure what his career was gonna where it was gonna take him. He wasn't guaranteed to get into the Super Rugby team the next season. You know, he he might have been stuck his whole life playing uh, club rugby in New Zealand. I, I, he didn't really want that, so he uh, he decided to come over to Cardiff um, just to make sure that he had a, a future. I think he's here for three years. Um, he has expressed okay. interest in not not actually aiming to play for Wales, but saying he wouldn't turn the opportunity down if it was presented to him. Of but, Excuse my ignorance for a second. Um, what what position is he? He's a centre. Um, centre. So th- there's there's some good uh, quality building up there at the moment because mm. obviously Rayleigh really Lowe has been playing really there, uh, really well there at the moment for Cardiff. You have got Corey Allen there as well. So uh, you'd say maybe you know if during the Six Nations, while Corey Allen is most likely going to be off with Wales, you have Rayleigh Lowe and Willis Hallaholo there as well. So that's a really strong set of partnership yeah. to have while you're internationals so you away. S- um, you said he uh, he had aspirations for the Welsh team. Well, uh, I mean that or, it's how old is he? Is like he, he or, he's 26. Um, so only, I mean, that's three years qualification. Well, he's going to be 29 when he qualifies. So the Welsh team's going to have to be in a really bad place for him to happen. be able to be picked, but. Um, I suppose yeah. it shows, if anything, even though he's probably not never going to get picked for Wales, that he he wants to stay here for the long term. You know, he's not just going to stay yeah. in Cardiff for a season and sense. bugger off back to New Zealand. So, uh, yeah, I th- I, I'm I'm looking forward to him coming down. I think you'll. I hope he's he'll do what the Pro 12 for Cardiff, what Pietau's done for Ulster in the Pro 12. Um, yeah, I hope you have that kind of effect because I think. Piatau for Ulster would have been absolutely fantastic. I was kind of a worry. I, I was worried. I'm not sure about anyone else that maybe he perhaps wouldn't uh, perform the same way he did as he did for Wasps because you know um, he'd, he'd he'd have settled in there for a season, then coming over to another team and maybe wouldn't have had the effort to sort of go for it. But he, he really has been going for it this season, uh, and it's made the Pro 12 better just by having him there as an example to go off really. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, no, like, uh, the thing about, um, you know, I suppose the Pro 12 wouldn't buy as many players as other leagues. Now, that that depends entirely on the team, of course. You know, Italian teams import players. Uh, Edinburgh is essentially a South African team. Um, but, you know, the, again, bringing in foreign players as well is a way to increase attendance at matches, increase... Um, uh, I suppose just viewability is is what you use there as well. Um, you know, as you can see, especially when fans can get around a uh, new signing, 
and especially one that has promise but may not be you know we, we can't compete with the premiership we can't compete with uh, the top 14 in in terms yeah. of contracts price going out for the best of the best um going out for national players who have uh, 30 40 50 100 caps um so you know what what pro 12 teams generally do and i know i'm not too sure about um say scotland or wales but i know in ireland especially leinster generally targets um say those guys that have potential seem good but aren't getting as much game time as they'd like or um especially when it comes to the national team they just they're they're blocked by say five other kiwis <laughs> who are you know lining mm-hmm. up to to put on the black and even still it's it's you know it's it's extreme, extremely difficult for each one of them as well um or say someone in australia or or, or south africa in a similar position where they just they, you know they're probably not going to get that game time or that recognition or that progression um and they you know they tend to be the ones that integrate a lot better into the team the the culture uh the country so you know i mean that yeah. that's the hope that um you know the blues can can do something similar as well get the fans behind them um and just you know get more bums on seats get a new stadium which is making me jealous just by you talking about it and uh well you're getting a new one you... aren't you down in uh, the rds is getting a little bit of a revamp that's true that's true it's um I believe the the plans were originally for twenty five thousand seats, but it was uh, scaled back secretly to twenty one thousand. And the problem is, we don't actually own the grounds. It's not owned by Leinster. It's not owned by the RFU. It's owned by the Royal Dublin Society, um, and they have a yearly horse show. Um, and the reason why um, the RDS is not covered completely, or they're not going to completely revamp the whole thing is the ends behind the posts have to be retractable so that the horse show can go ahead. Um, so really they've renovated what the grandstand and they're now going to, that, that was a couple of years ago, and the plan is to uh, renovate the Anglesey stand. So that's really kind of, it's limited. Um, Leinster's not really going to see a huge amount of money from it in the future. There'll be a few more thousand people in, in, in the stadium. But, uh, you know, we're paying for something that isn't going to be ours, unfortunately. Which, which it sounds like um, because Cardiff Farms Park is right beside the Millennium Stadium, the entire area is owned by the WRU. So, you know, when you go ahead and create or build this new stadium or renovate um, the CAR, you know, what you have out of that is something that you own. Um, any events you hold there, any concerts you may hold there, um, all ticket sales, um, I, I'm assuming the food uh, or concessions on the ground as well, um, will all just feed back into Cardiff and the WRU. So, you know, that's um, having your own stadium, especially one that's that's just so uh, modern. Well, uh, um, you know, is the, the Arms Park is actually owned by Cardiff Athletic Club. Um, oh, is it? Yeah, ah, the, the whole, I take all the, of that back. The whole area. Um, it's it's actually it's on like one of those hundred year leases uh, to Cardiff yeah. Blues and Cardiff RFC and all that kind of thing. Oh, right. Um, so, yeah, it, it's all owned by this. I take it back. Big sort of Cardiff <laughs> Athletic Group. Um, but I, I, I think it's sort of a middle ground from where you were saying about what you thought it was and where it is currently with Leinster. Yeah. It's sort of like, the, it's a bit more connected than what's going on in Leinster, but it's not entirely owned by, by the, yeah. the Cardiff Rugby. Yeah. Um. But anyway, other things. Dear moderator. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just uh, thinking where else to go next. Um, I suppose we've been on this for a while now, haven't we? Um, I mean, you say that pro the uh, pro twelve teams haven't been able to compete at the same level as uh, the French teams and the English teams when it comes to I suppose signing. <coughs> and, uh, Certainly money-wise, but they are still, certainly going by this weekend, uh, extremely able in throwing about what they have to f- certainly front up on the scoreline, um, if nothing else. So, uh, definitely, whatever uh, shortcomings the clubs might have, it's not often, I suppose, that that is reflected in how they play, at the very least. Um, so I suppose 
the Pro 12 going from strength to strength, if that's doing its thing to strengthen the European game as a whole, then I'm, I suppose there is some hope to be had that they push the uh, they push the Premiership and the top 14 sides they play in said European matches to perhaps uh, be more competitive themselves. Mm. Honestly, um, I, th I think yeah, uh, well, you never. It's it's a bit you know wibbly wobbly, but. Okay. I'm sure there is some logic. I, to I think it. weirdly the the rebranding a few years ago had a big thing to do with it. Being when it was like the old Rabo Direct Pro 12, when it was it was orange yeah. and blue, and it looked a little bit naff. Well, what is it now? It's the Guinness Guinness Pro 12, and it's it's very it oh, looks okay. very good. It's black and gold and white. It looks quite professional. The, the, the old orange and blue look really really naff on all like the branding ugly. stuff. Ugly, horrible. And then it's you've horrible. got this this yeah. this classy sort of. It looks a bit like the kind of European style as well. You have got this black and gold uh, branding to the Pro 12. You got um, I think moving the final to a neutral venue was I think upset a few Irish fans, but I think has actually been really beneficial. Um, Most mostly just Leinster fans. Final this year going to be in Leinster, isn't it? Going to be in Dublin. It is. Final it is. Yeah, but in in the Aviva this year, yeah. not in the RDS. Yeah, it's hardly neutral. Um, Oh right! Oh well. Uh, so yeah, I, you okay. know exactly. That, that should be good. The, the final, the first sort of neutral final in Ravenhill was really, really entertaining. It was good, full stadium, and then they took it to Murrayfield, and even though they didn't fill it, like the atmosphere was brilliant from what it looked like. You know, I didn't go there, but yeah. um, it looked like I a really good atmosphere. You, Should have made a day trip. I can there. guarantee you the the that Lands End Road is going to be absolutely jam packed for it. Regardless of of who's going to be playing, um, just Irish people tend to just flock to to sports, and especially something like a final. Right. No, it's no no fans travel like Irish fans travel, and um, especially when you just have to walk down the road. <laughs> yeah, there is that. No, but I mean, I'm thinking. I can remember a few years ago there was a game for Harlequins. Um, my actually, I think it might have been against Munster, um, where I think more tickets were sold. To traveling fans than time to. Uh, oh, than to, uh, was that not fans. was that not um, Leinster? There was some massive cock up, but my, because at some point um, now I remember um, was it 2014 um, against uh, it was Leinster. Um, well, had, I'm, I'm sure it was Harlequins game. Yeah, it might have been Harlequins. Uh, it was it was a Harlequins yeah. or Wasps? I can't remember who, and they started to say. Uh, Maybe I am confusing this with maybe it is Munster, but um, there was there was an Irish team as either Leinster or Munster playing against um, a team in London, and they Saracens I thought Munster Saracens maybe. No, I'm I'm sure this was Harlequins, and there was some massive cock up yeah. or ball ache with and whoever they, they that, because I the Harlequins fans were starting to sell their tickets on to uh, to other people and more tickets were being sold whether through the right or the wrong channels and so when the crowds turned up it was like 70 or 80 percent away fans um because and it's do you, do you know what i think it was saracen's <laughs> monster because um uh, a few years back the the monster fans drowned out the horrible 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 saracen's music when a try was scored um, they were very loud and mm. vocal, and then they were playing Saracens again. I'm pretty sure it was Saracens. Um, maybe, maybe it happened with Harlequins as well, okay. but it, it definitely was Saracens. And um, they then started this the last time they played in London. Um, Saracens started to restrict uh, ticket sales, and they said, um, "If you have an Irish sounding name, we are going to question." <laughs> and, and you're looking at it going, do, do you, like because London is is full of Irish people. Yeah. I mean, there's 1.5 yeah, million that, that's Irish. That's not a clever tactic. Odd in in uh, England, and then you have yeah. Irish people or English people descended from Irish people, which is probably to the tune of six million. So you have seven odd million people with uh, probably Irish sounding names <laughs> trying to get that tickets legitimately idea. for a match and then being told, sorry, your name yeah. is too Irish. I remember there was a scandal about it, or not scandal, but um, Irish fans or people in Ireland, we had social media kicking up a fuss about it and heard her, you know, I'm being told I need to be angry. But it just sounds like, not a cock up, but someone in the marketing department probably um, was looking for a new job <laughs> after, after that. <laughs> we'll put it that way. So... Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> Saracens for you. Oh dear, that's not great, is it? Um, okay, I suspect we should probably move on. I think worth mentioning, I have just suddenly realised um, 
and I think it might be this weekend. There is this is very tangentially related only by uh, the grounds of the sport, but I believe an American football game is being played. I think it's this weekend. Oh yes, yeah, uh, in, in London, and it's being played at Twickenham Stadium. And I'm one of those grouchy, boring people that just really, really, really dislikes American football. Um, I, I just am not a fan. Um, and I don't get why they're playing it in our beloved Twickenham rather than at that crap heap of Wembley. Because I'm sure that you can fit more people in Wembley. Um, and they're not going to, you know... Um, uh, I can't imagine... I'm sure that's just going to... I'm sure there's potential there to damage the grounds of Twickenham with... The way they're always formed in that one line, and then it shifts back and forth, but it's still... I don't know. You mean a scrum? I'm making things up to sound... <laughs> <laughs> no, the... Uh... <laughs> you can't tell me I hate them. There's a... Uh... I'm being difficult. I, it's, but I just... Yeah, that was worth mentioning. In, I mean, internationally, there's not much to talk about uh, for a while. I mean, the uh, the NRC and the Curry Cup are still going on. The Mitre 10, I think, is oh. probably still going on. Um uh... But the rugby championship is over, but the final Bledisloe match, um, Bledisloe 3, uh, Australia and New Zealand playing at Eden Park this weekend. Yeah. Um, I've seen a news article from an Australian source saying Australia can win, but won't. Um, I think, going by performances, I suppose, from the past, uh, what's it now, October? So... Uh, past four or five months, I don't see a reality in which Australia does win. You realise those? Well, I would like them to do so. Those were the so, exact words used be- by that magazine that said uh, Japan wouldn't beat South Africa. The exact <laughs> words you said there, well, there I, is no yeah, reality well, I, in which I think, that happens. <laughs> on it, no, that was the uh, that was the review on uh, YouTube. The they were reviewing the game, and they were like they were playing through. They didn't want to bother doing anything with all the games they weren't playing and so they just did auto scores or something and they were looking at the two teams and it was just in no reality does that happen when talking about uh, Japan beating uh, South Africa but I, th- I, I think this is slightly different um, I feel this is that's a ridiculous thing to say when talking about Australia potentially beating New Zealand compared to Japan potentially beating South Africa but I think the New Zealand team at the moment are on uh, one incredible streak, um, and while you know Australia is, I think, the only team. I won't say that because then Deck will feel bad as Ireland are playing them twice. But <laughs> Australia are the only team with a with a realistic shot, let's say, of a uh, putting a dent in New Zealand's uh, go to another perfect year. Any, any team, um, so they may do it, but I think New Zealand haven't lost in Eden Park for. I think what at least seven years. Oh yeah, in Eden Park, I think it's um, uh, since the nineties. It's been a long. Oh god, time. really? I thought they lost to France with, or maybe that was somewhere else in a. Yeah, but it's I, I just I don't see the the current Australia team, the current New Zealand team, the fact that they're playing in Eden Park. I just I'm not sure I see that happening. I'd like it to, I just don't think it will. Yeah, yeah, no, I. <laughs> I mean, we'll. I think we'll be supporting Australia, but yeah, it's it's probably unlikely. Yeah. I mean, the t- the teams won't be announced until I suppose, you know, Wednesday or Thursday. But um, and we're unlikely to pod between now and then or after um, then before the match. But the, the the only other thing I'd throw out as well is uh, <coughs> I I completely forgot about it and got a social media reminder today. Uh, saw an ad somewhere or or saw it pop up um, that. Fiji is playing the Barbarians in oh. Belfast. So is South Africa. In but this is in Belfast, so in it's uh, you oh, know okay. it's the 11th of oh. November. It's it's something different that um, you know. I, Absolutely. In it, you know it's outside of Dublin. It's it's two neutral yeah. teams and a neutral ground. Um, <coughs> I've never been to uh, Ravenhill, so yeah, it's it's something that. Um, have you have you ever? Uh, have I ever? Have either of you two ever been to watch the uh, the Barbarians play? Because that is generally always. I, I've fun. never seen the Barbarians live, Have, so yeah. in person. My, so uh, you know that's. Yeah, my my first Wales game was uh, Barbarians. So yeah, it was uh, it was nice. good. Shane Williams was is uh, he played in that? That was the 2012, I think. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and it was uh, Martin Williams' hundredth cap as well. So that that was a good one. Yeah. 
I think I can't. I've got. I'm sure I've got a load of stickets tasked away, but I think. Um. Because I think I think I first went to see the Barbarians. Uh. The season after South Africa won the World Cup, uh, they played the Barbars in Twickenham, and that was pretty fun. Some very, very loud fans behind us, but I think I've seen Barbarians play more than any other team, including England and Harlequins. Wow, that's impressive. Because um, it's, well, it's, it's, I think, well, maybe maybe it's a tie with one of them, but they are the matches are nearly every year. The tickets are generally fairly cheap, even for very good seats, and I think all the adverts that are going up at the moment is they're doing what they did for the Argentina-Australia game that's just gone, um, and the tickets have dropped down to £20 a ticket again, so um, yeah. I can't recommend enough. If anyone wants to where's, see Barbarians play Fiji or Barbarians play South Africa... Where's where's the South African tickets. match on? Uh, it's a Twitter. Ah, fantastic. So um, yeah, I mean, the, the tickets are cheap enough for when, Ulster... I mean, or for, sorry, in um, Belfast. It's, it's only, yeah. as you said, £20. Only just saw the price there, so... Damn, I should start thinking about this. <laughs> no, so, I mean, ser ser I, I honestly, seriously consider it because it is. They are, but especially because of the players that you'll see play. Oh yeah. Are so either ones that aren't playing anymore for the national team, um, and so even if you were going to see their national team play, you might miss them. But it's that I suppose just you know that that grand collection of players that that mishmash of different nationalities and teams and all those different coloured socks. It's aside from just being, you know, a great tradition in rugby. Um, they usually play an exciting brand of rugby. In fact, just to double down on that point, the last two years, 2015, Barbarians played Argentina. 2014, Barbarians played Australia. Two of the best matches I think I've watched. <laughs> yeah. In all the years I've been watching rugby, um, and I'd recommend if people can find replays to those matches, do. Um, and if you can find tickets to said matches coming up, then it's always worth it, I think, when they're playing. I, I don't think they've ever had a particularly dull match. Um, and for myself, it's it's better than seeing no <coughs> match, because um, I have no <laughs> tickets for any of the Autumn Internationals. I'm sure I could find some for Canada, which actually you know, I wouldn't mind seeing, yeah. but I think it's on the same weekend. Um, but unfortunately, yes, no tickets for um, Australia or New Zealand, because... Um, they all disappeared within, uh, I think, two days of going on general sale, and they're all up for resale around um, 200, 250 euros. So oh. I d God, I wish they'd stamp out. Yeah, exactly. So I don't think I'll be um, uh, forking out that much, as much as I'd love to see oh, New Zealand or, or Australia and Dublin. Uh, it's a bit too high yeah. of an investment. I mean, you know, you know who does have tickets though, and who hasn't said anything in about five minutes. Oh, really? This guy. Yeah, he's going to see a uh, Wales play Japan. Fantastic. I'm extremely jealous of. I might add. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't uh... think has 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 Ireland ever played Japan. I, I don't think so. They must. Oh, it's time for Google. Uh... Yeah, that's that's you're gonna have to oh, look yeah. that up on the wiki. Oh, this is my favorite um, thing. The I think, I mean, rugby data I website. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose we shouldn't spend too much on the Autumn Internationals because I think the first one is still, as we say, about two weeks of away. Of course. Certainly three weeks until they start en masse. But, uh, How about yeah, we... Uh, uh, Adam, you are... I, I was going to swing it back to the European yeah. Cup matches this weekend, but do you want to no, just, just gonna say, uh, briefly gloat about how you get to see uh, Wales against Japan? Yeah, or? I'm looking forward to it. Uh, uh, should be a good one. But yeah, um, finish up with the last sort of uh, the next weekend's game, games in Europe. Makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, we're back. Challenge Cup and uh, champ, uh, Challenge and Champions Cup. Not back for the Premiership and the Pro 12 until the week after. So, I mean, let's see. Who is playing? Uh, so, for Welsh teams, you've got uh, Poe are coming down to Cardiff to play Blues. Um, is it Poe? It is po 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 it's Poe. Oh, I thought it was it's Poe. Um, well, you learned something new. Yeah, uh, Ospreys are going to Lyon. Um... Ooh, that's exciting. Dragons that's, are uh... traveling to Siberia. Um, they might not. I, 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 they might not be traveling to Siberia. They might just be <laughs> going to somewhere a bit closer in Russia, where finding a, a little uh, closer for the team. Because I think uh, they had some trouble last season with getting all the way to Siberia and then playing in minus thirty conditions. Um, oh, so yeah, if, if you have time, look at uh, the highlights for NSA v Connacht. Um, the literally their hair it goes white. It's all frozen. The, the sweat freezes on their face. It's hilarious. Um, 
Yeah, so, yeah, dragons are going to Russia. Um, Scarlets are travelling to Saracens, which will be depressing. How do... Uh, uh, oh, really? How do, you, how do you two both rate uh, Edinburgh this season? As average as ever, really. Yeah. Average... Oh, so do you, do you reckon Harlequins are travelling? Do you reckon they have a they shot? They do, yeah. They do? Oh, I remain excited. I'm just hoping... We've, we've had a particularly dodgy start to the season. Um, nearly lost to Bristol. Uh, um, beat Saracens, which I suspect is the high point. But we're on the upswing. We're on the upswing. Harlequins are on the way up, on the ascendancy. And so I'm hoping... Edinburgh hoping. can be strong at home. It's but, very you know, They can. Yeah. Oh, so shit. Leinster almost, Leinster almost <laughs> lost in Edinburgh against Edinburgh. So, uh, you know, it's, no, really. it's no easy win, but you can do it. I'm No, I'm... I'm I'm resigning. You've, you've, I'm resigning all hope. Really? I'm, uh... A team as strong <laughs> as Harlequins. My God. I, I, I'm, I'm very pessimistic by nature. Ah, oh, no. Um, Listen, just sit down. I sit do... down. Have a pint. Well, oh, shit. No, with it, t- sit down with the Irish. It's uh, Leinster playing Montpellier. I reckon you should do well. Um, it's not going to be easy. Um, so I missed... I only kind of caught highlights and, and you know, had a look in, on Ultimate Rugby for uh, Northampton, Montpellier. Uh, so I yeah. don't think it's going to be easy, but uh, we should be able to win. Um, of course, you know, yeah. we did kind of trans Castro, but, uh, you know, look, that's uh, it could have been worse for Castro than, than, than what it was. Um, Lens had a lot of opportunities, but, you know, away from home and at home for France, or for a French team, uh, they always perform better. So, yeah, let's see. Yeah. Who, uh, let's... Uh... I'm just looking. Connaught just beat Connaught just beat Toulouse. Yeah, yeah. Toulouse are traditionally quite a strong team. Um, were Toulouse playing at home this weekend or Connaught? Uh, Connaught was at home, and next weekend or this weekend coming, they're away to Zebre. So yeah. look, uh, oh rematch. I'm just thinking. Wasps just did a <laughs> Wasps just did a number on a uh, Zebra, but I'm thinking. I'm looking at Wasps playing to Toulouse, and I'm thinking that's going to be a good match. I don't think they'll. No, I think that should, that might be the most entertaining match of next yep. weekend. Um, I think so too. Because Wasp, Wasps, I think they've lost one match this season so far. They have been incredibly fun to watch. Cipriani has found some very fine form. Um, and as a, a team, they are playing an exceptional brand of rugby. Um, I, was say, I'm a lot more, I, I, I don't know whether it's just that I now have access to BT to so have easier access to more of the matches than usual. But I find myself slightly more, yeah, I don't know, intrigued, I suppose, by the European competition this year. Um, so for me, I think um, it's definitely uh, the the level of access. Uh, you know, I'm on an older computer here that's a bit more clunky and uh, takes a while for everything to load. And you know, the computer that broke is one that I can just whip open. It loads up in a couple of seconds. I can podcast with you guys, or I can jump onto Reddit and find a stream for European or, uh, you know, God knows what rugby, uh, you know, so um, Southern Hemisphere as well. When I had that computer, I was watching a lot of it. So definitely access, which is, you know, uh, please don't put the Six Nations behind a paywall. <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> God, that would be so bad. Yeah, Ireland's probably going to do it. So bad. So, <laughs> it's, I t- it's. but um, yeah. I suppose apart from that, uh, it yeah, just Zebra Connacht. It, it, as uh, Adam said, it's going to be a replay. Uh, Connacht got a get out of jail free card. Uh, they were losing to Zebra in Italy, and this is in the Pro 12. Oh, and is the that, match that was cancelled. Was, so when was that? That was the Pro 12 match, yeah? That was Pro 12, yeah. It was cancelled. It was called off due to uh, a storm. Yeah. So they got to get out of jail free card. So Zebra at home is stronger. The Italian teams tend to perform decently. M- maybe maybe they can have this... Uh, maybe they can have this uh, game count as a, a score for both the Pro 12 and That Europe. actually would be nice and handy. But uh, um, So yeah, look, it, it's not going to be 84... Whatever. <laughs> 80, 82 yeah. 14, sorry. So, but, you know, Connacht could win, should win. Um, you know, who knows how that's going to go, especially with just the fact that the last one was cancelled or called off. Um, Ulster versus Exeter. Uh, I, you know, Ulster all the way. Uh, fuck you, Charlie. Uh, nah, I still love you. Um, <laughs> I'm only joking. Please don't cut everything I've said out of this podcast. Um, 
So I can't really call this. I, I've just been kind of really seeing Exeter pop up this year and last year in terms of the table, uh, doing decently well. Like they they have faltered somewhat in the last week yeah. or two, I think. So um, I say that they absolutely thrashed Harlequins, but they looked that I was really disappointed. I I was really excited to see them play um, this past weekend because they were at home to yeah. Claremont. Um, and they looked, the first 10-15 minutes, they looked properly in charge. They looked like they were in the ascendancy. They had the possession, they had the go-forward, and they looked like they were really pushing Claremont's defence. And then, the moment the first try went in, it all seemed to go to shit. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, well look, but, um, Ulster has to win this. It's at home, it's in Belfast, it's a difficult ground to go to. Uh, I'm not saying the Exeter can't do it, but um, Ulster must do it. So, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, didn't the Chiefs lose the last match? No. What was the score? Yeah. Against Claremont. Uh, they they Claremont got the bonus point, um, and Exeter right. scored one try. Thirty-five eight. Well, that's not well. Crazy. Look, it's it's At it's make to lose by that. You know, I'm not going to say it's make it or break it for for both, but it's an extremely important fixture that um, both teams win. And I'm just going to go with Ulster with home advantage. To be honest, um, you know, it's it's it does count for a lot. And uh, Munster Glasgow, um, you know, as as we said in the beginning of the podcast, we're not too sure if this is even going to go ahead. As EPCR Rugby has said, it's. Um, up to Munster to decide whether they do or don't. The fans on social media seem to be um, really for the idea of playing this match. It would be nice to see them kind of rally around the team, uh, the players. Um, you know, yeah. maybe maybe take their minds off it by focusing on on the next match. Uh, they do have um, Razi Erasmus there uh, as the kind of um, stop gapper, you know, to kind of fill in. But, uh, you know, of course, after losing your coach in Talisman, it's not an easy, you know, it's, it's not an easy task to kind of uh, uh, just put that aside and move forward. So we'll, we'll, I suppose it'll be announced if it will go ahead or not. Um, personally, I'd, I'd like to see it and, and just see the fans, uh, you know, give them something. But, um, yeah, if, if it does go ahead, uh, difficult fixture, to be honest. I, I, I wouldn't be able to say who would win. Um, I'd like to say Munster for home advantage, but the start of the season has been rocky. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I, losing to the Blues at home is just painful. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, yeah. so um, I'll tip, I'll tip Munster for it, but uh, you know, that's if it goes ahead. Yeah. So I suppose uh, probably worth wrapping up. Um, what else is there to say? So, yeah, uh, Adam, final thoughts. Uh yeah, I'll I'll go for some uh some Welsh team predictions uh for the weekend. I think, you know, Poe coming it's an away game for a French team in the Challenge Cup, they're not gonna bring a strong team. Um I think Blues yeah. should win it. Should get a bonus point as well, I think, just to wrap the uh the first block up quite nicely. Um makes things easier than going to Bath next time for a tough two week block. Um Dragons, I think, playing NSA, they should win that as well. I mean, it's they did. I think Worcester probably didn't take them seriously enough. They went out there with a, a young team. Um, so I think Dragons, you know, you you got to win your away games in uh, in Europe if you want to actually qualify. So yeah, um, I think if they go with a strong team, they they should win that. Scarlets, I mean, they got no chance against Saracens really, have they? Um, it's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If they can get a losing bonus point, uh, that would be probably the best they can hope for. Um, and actually pretty good for them, really. It leaves them in a good position. Osprey's going away to play Lyon. Um, you'd think they'd win that. Lyon, I think, did ham hammer Grenoble, or Grenoble, um, on the weekend. But I still think Osprey should go out there. So I I'd say three out of four Welsh wins this weekend, all in the Challenge Cup. Pro 12 Master Race marches yes, on. Well, apparently. I mean, I'm not a... I mean, Harlequins are where my, my interests are vested for Europe's rugby, and I think Edinburgh could be a tough fight. Otherwise, I think 
I think it's probably going to be mostly home wins for uh, the Premiership teams. Bath definitely going to beat Bristol. Worcester probably going to beat Brive. Might beat Brive. Brieve. Newcastle against Grenoble. Yeah, actually, I can. Well, well. I'd say it's it, that Newcastle could win it, but I'm not entirely sure the team that's been playing the last few weeks will. Sale, I doubt, will beat Toulon. Saracens definitely will beat Scarlets. Oh, come on. Sale will destroy Toulon. I really? <laughs> really? Um, and then, I mean, home-wise, Leicester against Racing 92. That will be a very good match, I think. Uh, um, a trio of whose players have just been cleared of doping, which I suppose is a good thing we didn't touch on in the episode, and uh, I shan't bring up again. But I still at Leicester. They've had a very, very rocky start to the season. Yeah, they have. Uh, I'm not entirely sure they can bring that one um, home. Um, so I reckon, yeah, that's a... Uh, I, yeah, match of the weekend, I think, will be Wasps against Toulouse. Uh, Definitely. Um, they go, uh, Northampton against Caster could be fairly entertaining. Oh, I think North Northampton, Northampton will uh, run in a... It, uh, if you want to see tries, Northampton will probably yeah. run in a bad... I'm going to throw a number out. I'm going to say six tries. Um, I think, but yeah, okay. So I think we scored five Whoops. against uh, Castro, but yeah, look, it's it's Castro and they don't really, I, they didn't really put up a huge fight. Oh, you've got to wrap up better than this. Come on, really? Ah, now listen, I'll wrap it up this way. <laughs> wrap it up this way. Uh, Ed, you don't have a team in uh, the Champions Cup, so from here on in, you're Aww. going to be supporting Leinster. Thank you very much. <laughs> you brought it on yourself. I would. <laughs> I, I thank. I, I know I can count on your support, though. Thank you. No, I'll, yes, I'll absolutely. buy you a jersey, and then I'll bring stir, you to the Pro stir, 12 stir. final. Oh yeah, you better. Post this <laughs> in the Six Nations. Right, so we should probably end this. Gone on long enough. Um, okay, so uh, this was uh, Line Break Rugby's take on uh, European rugby, by and large. Uh, we've had Harbour stuff or Deck with us. Say goodbye, Harbour stuff or Deck. See you again soon. I hope it won't be another eight months. And we've had Adam or CC with us. Uh, say goodbye, yeah, Adam or CC. Yeah, so she spoke this time. I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. And we were all stunned and shocked. I've been Ed or Wallaby Joe, depending on where you look for me. Um, and this was Line Break Rugby. So see you next time. And then I think at this point, Sam starts playing the music, and it's all very, you know, do 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 do. Cool. Do do do. Please thing. tell me we replace the yeah. music with something better. Oh no, it's still the same crap as always. Oh. You can we can stop recording now by the way. Oh sorry, yeah, I'll I'll press stop. <laughs>